India can be far more successful and influential than it is today. Question is, what do we need to do to succeed? How can we compete effectively against the best? Do we really need to identify our core competencies as a nation? Now, rather than speak from the perspective of business, which many of you are far better positioned to do, let me speak from the vantage point of a central banker. Now, I know these cameras are all here not to hear me speak about core competencies, but to hear my views on interest rates. <laughs> so let me offer my standard disclaimer. For any hints on what we will do in the upcoming policy statement, please read the guidance in our last policy statement. <laughs> and I will quote, Significant uncertainty will be resolved in the coming months, including the likely persistence of recent inflationary pressures, the full monsoon outturn, as well as possible Federal Reserve actions, which I guess we know didn't happen. As the Reserve Bank awaits greater transmission of its front-loaded past actions, it will monitor developments for emerging room for more accommodation. Now, let me advise that nothing I say in what follows is meant to offer further guidance and please don't read veiled meaning where none is intended. Industrial countries are still struggling with a few exceptions to grow and uncertainty about growth in the United States as well as the world is probably what, what uh, impelled the Fed to stay on hold yesterday. Our fellow BRICS have all got deep problems. Indeed, India appears to be an island of calm in an ocean of turmoil. So what is different? And how can we be assured that it will continue? Perhaps Brazil offers a salutary lesson. Only a few years ago, the world was applauding Brazil's strong growth, its thriving democracy, and the enormous strides it was making in reducing inequality uh, with its Bolsa Familia program. It grew at 7.6% in 2010 and had also discovered huge undersea oil reserves which the then President Lula likened to finding a lottery ticket. Yet this year, the country is expected to shrink by 3%, and its debt just got downgraded to junk. So what went wrong? Now, paradoxical as it may seem, uh, Brazil tried to grow too fast. The 7.6% came on the backs of substantial stimulus after the global financial crisis, and in an attempt to keep growth at that high level, the New York Times says the central bank was pressed to reduce interest rates, fueling a credit spree that overburdened customers are only now struggling to re repay. Further, Brazil's government funded a development, Brazil's government funded development bank, that is BNDES, hugely increased subsidized loans to corporations. Certain industries were favored with tax breaks while price controls were imposed on gasoline and electricity causing huge losses in public sector firms and a collapse in investment in those areas. Petrobras, the national oil company, which was supposed to make the tremendous investments in oil drilling, instead became embroiled in a corruption scandal. Even as government pensions burned an ever bigger hole in the government budget, budget deficit expanded for other reasons, and the political consensus to narrow them has become elusive. As a result, foreign investors have gotten worried. Brazil's currency has depreciated significantly over the last year. Now, undoubtedly, Brazil's authorities are working hard to rectify the situation. But let's take away the lessons that their experience suggests. I think the fundamental point it, it, it makes is, in this difficult environment, growth has to be obtained the right way. It is possible to grow too fast with substantial stimulus, as we did in 2010 and 2011, only to pay the price in higher inflation, higher deficits, and lower growth in 2013 and 2014. So our own experience suggests that we have to be careful.